Jordan Wal Walter, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on a great family film. Oh, thanks, Emmanuel. Appreciate it. <laughs> so one of, one of my uh, favorite things about film, obviously, is sometimes effects and what a bigger effect in this film than Clifford himself. Uh, can, you, can you gentlemen talk to me about the process of developing Clifford, the, the, his, make sure his hue's correct and making sure he, he looks convincing that he's in the real world? Yeah, absolutely. That it's not an easy task. Everything you just mentioned, it's like, you know, you could spend a year and a half just on color, um, you know, uh, in terms of how, you know, when we have realistic fur, how the light reflects off that. That's not a, a normal color you see in a dog. So getting that just right uh, was a thing in itself. And, and you know, for us, the decision to um, make him um sort of photo real uh, we just thought would tell a better sort of magic um give us a little bit more of an adventure story and our our effects company visual effects company mpc had just done the lion king um uh, the new one and the jungle book so they they were experts in sort of taking and you know cgi animals and and bringing them to life where you just can't believe that they're not real so we knew that that was the right company um, and then they, we just had to research a lot of puppy behavior, you know, and that's just watching a ton of videos and, and seeing how they work and move. And, and, you know, NPC just did an amazing job capturing that. And we observed a lot of puppy behavior in our own lives um, that we would want to make sure made it into the film. These movies are so funny when you're creating um, a photo real character, especially a photo real character that the audience knows really well. Um, not just that he's Clifford, but the audience knows what a dog looks like and up close and personal um, or a cat or a bird, whatever it is in your life. And um, when you're creating lions or panthers or other things, there's a little bit of suspension uh, because none of us have been that up close to any of those creatures, but we know what mannerisms of dogs are. We also know that they know exactly what we're thinking. Somehow they're mind readers and somehow we're mind readers back to them. That's what makes our relationship so close so that we experience the same sort of uh, unconditional love that uh, Emily Elizabeth has uh, with Clifford. And um, so in the creation, as Walt was saying, yes, a year and a half on red, a year and a half on how the light reflects on every hair that creates a collage of color that moves every second um, in that. And also the, the kind of puppy fat and the kind of wrinkles that puppies have and how expressive they are and how they, you know, there's that constant movement all the time, you know, with them. Um, we wanted to get all those things in so that every audience whether they were fans of Norman Bridwell and the books or whether they just love dogs and have never read the books would be relatable to all people who see it in that way. It be, being the fact that this is such a multi-generational property, uh, how important was it to get this mix of cast? Uh, you have, you know, different walks of talents, comedians, and people have been in uh, more uh, serious roles and vice versa, kids, ethnicities, uh, genders and and they all come in and, and do this really fun fabulous job oh yeah thanks we we just felt so blessed to get so many talented actors and, and John Cleese you know for me was one of my icons and and comedy legends and Jack Whitehall is is such a, a brilliant uh actor and comic and then Darby is so good and we just felt like because we were in New York City, there's such a great acting base. And, and Jordan and I had worked with a lot of these people um, before and they were friends. So, you know, when you're like, oh, I can call Tony. I think Tony Hale would be able to do this. And then he would say, oh, well, Keenan could do the vet. And then Jack would go, hey, I'm just working with Rosie Perez on my Netflix show. Like, let's get Rosie to be the vet. So it was it, it became a family that just kept growing. And then getting Paul Rodriguez, who I loved and hadn't seen in a little bit in there with Horatio Sands and then playing the brothers or then Russell Peters, um, you know, it, it just, and then David Allen Greer from In Living Color. Oh my gosh, another one of my favorites. So it, it was nice because everywhere you look in the movie, there's a very likable, fresh, talented face mm -hmm. that you're just like, oh my gosh, now I'm watching David. And then I'm watching Rosie and Keenan. So yeah, that, that what a what a thrill it was to get everybody in there. And people you feel like you know already, 
right? Because you've seen them. It was already, it was by casting in that manner, we were able to create a family, but a family you already felt like you knew when you met them. So you immediately go into their stories and their hearts. And we were like a family as a, as a crew and actors and everybody. It was a joy, a true joy to make the film um, day in and day out. Um, everybody, Walt is so wonderful as a director. You know, he's always getting what's in the script and then letting the actors have is whatever they want to do and ad lib some more. And you can just imagine how funny it was on the set to hear Paul or hear Horatio or Rosie or Keenan or, you know, who Jack for sure, you know, in that. Um, uh, and Darby had to try to keep up with that because it was going on <laughs> around her all the time. It was so fantastic. Yeah, I mean, you had the familiarity of Clifford and now you have all these familiar faces from, from Hollywood blend into for, for such a great film. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate the insight on Clifford. Congratulations and uh, we hope to talk to you again. Thank great. you, Emmanuel. Take care. Thank you, Emmanuel. Appreciate you.